Good evening. Tonight I bring you a paranormal experience. Well, actually, a few tiny ones stitched together from a tour guide employee working in a mansion. A haunted mansion, evidently. Now sit back and relax. Author name, Spooky Speaker. Story title, I was a tour manager for the Winchester Mystery House. I landed the summer job a few years ago while getting my bachelor's in history. Fitting. The admins or owners treat us tour guides like crap on minimum wage. It's hardly a sustainable job. If it wasn't for the tips, the nice folks would generously throw at us at the end of tours. For those of you who don't know the Winchester house, it's a 160 room mansion built off land purchased by Sarah Winchester at the turn of the 19th century that used to be an eight room farmhouse like any other in pre-Silicon Valley. The owners of the place today are descendants of the Brown family who purchased a Victorian home in a public auction. They have before claimed it to be the most haunted house in North America. I find the owners of it today to be shady, lucrative people. They typically hire 6 to 12 tour guides per year, as some do it seasonally and others just retire. It's a balance between college and grad students studying history or in theater programs and middle-aged plus elder folks who have been around for quite some time. The medical benefit from the job is, if you get injured at the house, they pay for all related medical expenses. But that's about it from my time working there which was within the past few years. My role as tour guide was to coordinate my tours, which ranged from as little as 3 to 28 people on a 65-minute guided tour within an 8-hour shift. So there'd be about 4 to 6 tours in a day per guide. When I started out, I was given a week to explore the mansion on my own and get a look around, afterward being tested on a script written in part by the mansion historian a full-time position held by a really nice lady, and recycled material from where our tours began in the 1920s. I have explored I'd say about 80% of the mansion. Some places are locked and really hard to get past, and I have had some unexplainable occurrences. One notable instance was when I was giving a tour to 27 people, while in the 13th bathroom, which had the unfinished state-of-the-art shower. My tour delivery was interrupted by a very faint shriek that sounded as though it was coming from down the halls, from the switchback staircase. I asked if others heard it, and they said yes. Quite strange. More eerily, but also I'm really not sure if it was just my imagination. During my second day of training, I walked up to the fourth turn of the switchback staircase and thought I heard footsteps to the rhythm of a shadowy figure that suddenly creeped in the corner of my eye. As I walked up to the shallow stairs, it was coming up them as well behind me. Imagination or not, I ran into the upstairs hay room, now a display room for artifacts, as fast as I could. Apparently, seeing a shadowy womanly figure in black has been the complaint of others as well. Other things would happen. Like a tour in front of me one time witnessed a photograph frame fall from a high shelf in the bathroom and shatter. The sudden smell of roses in Madame Sarah's dead room, etc. Us guides called it the dead room, but the admins didn't wish guests to know that that was our name for it. The scariest experience of all was exploring the unlit attic, off limits and used for storage of decor. In between a tour break with my phone flashlight, the beautiful third floor window, which can be seen in nearly every online front picture of the mansion, is where I encountered a horrific, grotesque figure in a woman's Victorian morning gown. Its hollowed eyes and rotting face was literally set up at that window, holding a rose and pointing outward. For a mere second, I seized in terror with my phone light fixed. For me to see it was a rubber possible zombie decor used during spooky events. Haha. <laughs> there were many memories made there. 
One of my favorite was giving tours to company-hosted reservations. Open drinks aren't allowed in the house for purposes of preservation. Say you were to spill a drink. But when Google and other tech companies bought out the place for a night, the admins would turn a blind eye and ask those of us chosen to host them not to ask them to put their drinks away. The employees of said companies were quite nice folk though, and were easy to get along with and entertain. Personal Thoughts What my mind especially goes back to in these stories was the shadowy figure out of the corner of your eye or even just a presence that you can sometimes feel. I've gotten this too. Not in my own home, but this was a long time ago in a friend's place. It does appear in all the stories I always read is that Ghosts or presences, they seem bound to a specific location. It doesn't appear like that's a myth. Uh, maybe location is the wrong word though. It's more, they are bound to an object. But that object can even shift because, I mean, it's going back to that ship, uh, what was the name? Ship of uh, Thesis? The Ship of Thesis, which is um, an old um, kind of metaphysical reality example. If you change all the components in a ship, well, or one at a time, at what point does it become a new ship? So, whatever is bound to an object, if it's a ghost, a presence, that object has to maintain a certain structure, or it seems to lose connection. Obviously, there haven't been studies done on this or anything, it just seems to be anecdotal, and from all the stories I've read. But it is interesting that this place does appear to be so haunted. I think part of it too is simply the expectation that it's haunted opens the mind to perhaps perceiving things that aren't there, but I do think there are some real occurrences that happen that just can't be explained, at least not yet. <laughs>